Hey, I'm Larry, glad you're here. You might have heard recently of CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies. CBDCs are a form of programmable electronic money issued by a central bank. A BIS survey found that 90% of governments are presently working on CBDC technology. On March 9, 2022, the President of the United States signed an executive order in which he stated, quote, my administration places the highest urgency on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a United States CBDC, unquote. Government officials commenting on the executive order frame this project in the standard language of WEF buzzwords. So that's not very encouraging, is it? After exponentially deepening the 2020 health crisis by unprecedented restrictions to freedom, the government of Canada froze the bank accounts of citizens who were engaged in a nonviolent protest in February 2022. So I guess governments do not need CBDCs to freeze bank accounts. Still, as Matthew Crawford observes, moral panics have the utility of arming, quote, top-down projects of social transformation typically by administrative fiat, quote, and, quote, the usually subterranean core of the liberal project is not merely political, but anthropological, to remake man, unquote. So how do you remake man? An entire science of behavioral modification has arisen which Shoshana Zuboff calls instrumentalism. Replacing cash with the use of programmable CBDCs could sharply tilt power from the everyday citizen toward governments and corporate overlords. Social engineering could speed the end of both secular and religious freedom. Christians understand that the borrower is servant to the lender, that the control of money is often a tool of oppression. All that we possess comes from God. Property ownership is the result of God giving life, mercy, opportunity, and blessing. I can buy gasoline from an unbeliever, but I should not become a co-owner with him in jointly purchasing a gas station. The increasingly authoritarian landscape of public-private partnerships, so-called, between the state and private corporations, blurs these lines. And when the state gets together with private industry, the result is monopoly and fascism. But let's back up for a moment. What is a CBDC? Listen to the definition offered by the Bank of International Settlements. Quote, a CBDC is central bank issued digital money denominated in the national unit of account, and it represents a liability of the central bank. It offers a new option to the general public for storing value and making payments. A CBDC is different from existing forms of cashless payment instruments for consumers and businesses, such as credit, transfers, direct debits, card payments, and e-money, as it represents a direct claim on a central bank rather than the liability of a private financial institution. Unquote. Money is used you know, to exchange goods and services, to transfer wealth from one party to another. Modern society differs from the agrarian economy seen in Old Testament times. In our world, central banks issue currencies. Banks trade the money that we give them for a promise to give money to us when we request it. it that's kind of the simple way it works. Mostly, we as individuals control to whom we give our money. But CBDCs have a crucial new quality. They're digital and they are programmable. Every unit of a CBDC is uniquely identifiable and the issuer can restrict your wealth transfer. Under a CBDC regime, not you, but you and the central bank control the use of the money. Under a CBDC regime, money becomes a kind of token over which someone else has ultimate control. BIS General Manager Augustin Karstens points to the importance of this change. Listen. There is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who is using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely important and that makes 
a huge difference with respect to what she, to what cash is. So now this element of control over CBDCs is illustrated in the real world by China's digital yuan trial in Shenzhen. Citizens were given CBDCs, but there was a catch. The CBDC was programmed with an expiration date. In this way, the people were encouraged to spend the money and discouraged from placing it in the savings account. 90% of the yuan were spent in shops. Some have extolled China's digital yuan because it uses a string of numbers to identify the money rather than the name of the user. They claim this gives more privacy than the credit card system most of us are familiar with. But CBDCs are programmable and the data surrounding their use, the programs that, that operate them, could be changed at any time. And, and that anonymities could be withdrawn. More than this, the centralized nature of CBDCs means that the central bank or a second-tier controlling entity could add or remove money from anyone's account with the flip of a switch. Now, from our standpoint in mid-2022, most CBDCs are said to be two to four years away. But some are already here. That's right, some are already here. Not only has China been using a digital yuan since April 2020, but the Bahamas issued a working CBDC in October 2020. It's called the Sand Dollar. Quote, to make it easier for Bahamians to spend their digital dollars, the licensed digital payment platform Island Pay on Wednesday announced it partnered with MasterCard to issue their first ever prepaid card link to a CBDC, giving residents the option to instantly convert their Sand Dollars to Bahamian dollars to spend anywhere MasterCard is accepted on the islands and around the world. And the sand dollar can help here because it can be operated via mobile phones. The sand dollar is the digital version of the Bahamian currency. Uh, it's built to be used on the mobile wallet platforms that our financial institutions are introducing. The amazing thing about sand dollar is that there are no fees or transaction costs. So if I need to pay one of my staff, I can do it right there in the moment. They receive it literally within seconds. When COVID happened, I, I wanted to move away from handing and touching money from others for the safety of myself and my family. So using sand dollar just helped me be more safer and feel secure. We need to leapfrog now and allow everybody to provide financial services through the digital channels. It's convenient, it's digital, and I'm always on my phone anyway, so it only makes sense to have my money in my hand. I'm excited to see where uh, the Bahamas goes and how we flourish with the digital economy moving forward. Revelation 13, 11 to 17, describes the rise of an entity students of Bible prophecy have identified as a degenerated United States under the control of a Protestant or post-Protestant religious influence. In the closing stages of its existence, this power would exercise singular geopolitical influence, influence so strong that no one refusing compliance with her directives will be able to buy or sell. Until recently, this scenario seemed fanciful because there were no evident mechanisms to enforce prohibitions to buying and selling on this scale. But the rise of Bitcoin and similar DLT-based coins since 2009 has made substantial financial transactions possible through non-state controlled currencies. Nation states are moving rapidly to compete. How? By developing CBDC technology. Movement toward a CBDC-dominated financial regime would dramatically increase external control over how you use your money. Through CBDCs, private corporations or governments would track 100%, that's what I said, 100% of your spending. They could easily surveil the full landscape of your political and religious views and maybe sway your exercise of religion. When society has undergone a substantial transition to the CBDC regime, the power of the central bank will be without equal. The threat of exclusion from the system would be beyond contemplation. That threat could influence denominational theological positions. Do you think so? Your buying and selling habits could be coerced as described 
in Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. The use of a CBDC means all of your transactions are traced. Illegal activity can be blocked. But who is it that decides what is illicit activity? Will authorities be able to automatically impose fines? Automatically make withdrawals? Will they be able to limit transactions on the basis of a social credit score? Will they be able to limit food purchases or ability to travel because of a personal carbon score? The World Economic Forum actually issued a 28-page guide to creating CBDCs for governments. I've linked to it down below. And it includes among the questions each government should ask itself when creating a CBDC, quote, can a third party freeze or seize CBDC assets, unquote. Remember what I said? Programmable money? Yeah. Revelation 18 foretells the final and complete destruction of Babylon. Particularly interesting is how the Bible identifies her two fundamental accomplice groups, the kings of the earth, Revelation 18, verses 9 and 10, and the merchants of the earth, Revelation 18, 11 to 20. Whatever happens on the way, Babylon's final destruction disrupts this three-way, I guess you could call it, public-private partnership. The final concentration of power will be a spiritually incestuous and fascistic relationship between the church, the state, and merchants, which fits perfectly the scenario outlined in Revelation chapter 13. The convergence of these powers will mean economic coercion on unprecedented scale, the final test of humanity. Of course, it will have to do with worship, but intermediate developments along the way which until now have been opaque to us. They seem to be emerging, coming into the open. The advent of programmable money, the quote, huge difference, unquote, in control, noted by the BIS chairman, could have its part in completing the final architecture of global control. Hey, we can be certain that when the powers that be are ready, they will tout extraordinary conveniences for CBDCs. You've just gotta have one. You just gotta be in it. The conveniences and advantages, we're going to feel that they're basically irresistible. And yet, if there is any people who should know better before signing up to the unprecedented powers for social control that come with a CBDC-based financial regime, it should be Christians. Friend, you and I have been warned. Jesus triumphs in the end. I have no worries about that. But along the way, Let's be careful out there. We're living in very strange times.